Hello and welcome back to Coffee with Cannell. I am Sean Cannell and in this episode, we're actually going to be talking about how to go full-time, make a full-time living and earn a full-time wage from YouTube, even if you have a small audience. And we're going to be talking about the concept of 1,000 true fans. And so buckle your seatbelt. We've got some powerful um, content to, to share. And if you're new to Coffee with Cannell, during the first 15 minutes, I've got some structured teaching if you want to watch that first part on the replay. And then during the second half of the show, I bring you on to answer your questions about YouTube, social media, online business, and really how to scale and grow your income and your influence faster with video. And so let's just dive right into it. Um, but uh, here we go. So today's topic is 1000 true fans, how to make a full-time living on YouTube with a small audience. And let me know if you're watching this, have you already started a YouTube channel and what is your YouTube channel about? Now, today's episode is brought to you by talk with think Dot com link in the description below and we'll post a link in the comments as well um, if you ever want to get in touch with us at think media because you've moved into a time in your life and your business and your brand where you're serious and you want to start accelerating and maybe learn more about some of our courses or our monthly coaching program or any of our events talk with think is the place to do it you can schedule a 15 minute call with somebody from the think media team and we will figure out if um, and how we can help you reach your goals faster and so that is how today is brought to you if you're watching live wendy antonia frills good to see you walter um let's keep going so here's the question how can i make a living on youtube without a huge following like how is it possible to make a living off of YouTube? And this could be true for anything. I mean, podcasting, social media, we are living in the new economy, the internet, right? Where the ability to have an online business to make money online. But the question is, oh man, is it only for those with a million subscribers? Is it only for those that have 100,000 subscribers? Is it possible to earn a full-time living if I don't have a huge audience? And the answer is yes. And if you haven't heard about the concept of a thousand true fans, this is a critical teaching to understand. Back in 2008, Kevin Kelly wrote an article and an essay about a thousand true fans. And this is what the premise is. To be a successful creator, you don't need millions. You don't need millions of dollars. You don't need millions of customers. You don't need millions of clients. You don't need millions of fans. And that is the myth that influencer kind of marketing has told us. Ah, I got to be just super famous. So I need a million subscribers to hit a tipping point of making enough money with like YouTube ad sense and YouTube ads. And that actually is kind of true if that's how you're going to make money. But in this very video, we're going to pull back the curtain of how tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of micro influencers like you and me can actually go full time and make a living. The article says as a craftsperson, a photographer, a musician, a designer, an author, an animator, an app maker, an entrepreneur, or an inventor online, you just need 1000 true fans. You know, my friend and one of the speakers at our recent event growth video wrote a book called super fans. It sort of was inspired by this very essay from 2008, over 12 years ago. And it's still true today. Highly recommended book, by the way, Pat Flynn, super fans. And one thing people were doing, let me know in the comments, if you were a part of our virtual conference recently, Growth Video Live, he trained on that and um, be watching the recordings. And next week, we're going to be letting you know if you missed it, how you can get access. It was really more than just conference recording. It's really a workshop step-by-step of uh, how to build a real business with video. But Spock, talking about a thousand true fans, let's break down the math. One way to think about this is imagine you create something to sell, all right? Just think about it as anything right now. You create some merch, uh, you sell a sweatshirt, you create a digital product, um, you, you do uh, coaching online in some in some way. People pay you via PayPal. Um, you create a mug, you know, the Rise and Grind mug, for example. Uh, it could be anything. And so, follow me. This is you've got a a small audience. Now, you may have ten thousand YouTube subscribers. You may have three thousand YouTube subscribers using YouTube as an example. 
not all of them are going to be true fans. What's the definition of a true fan? Well, a true fan is someone who's so into what you're doing, passionate about your content, passionate about your brand, that if you release something, they're all in. And let me know if there's somebody like that for you in the comments. I know today, when it comes to music, a lot of us probably just stream music and maybe buy less or no music like we used to, but I grew up buying CDs, right? I grew up buying uh, tapes back in the day. In fact, the first concert I ever went to and the first band I was a true fan of was New Kids on the Block. I may be ashamed to admit. Come on, step by step. Ooh, baby, gonna get to you, girl. Okay, I shouldn't be saying. Does anybody remember New Kids on the Block? I had all five New Kids on the Block tapes. I think there was five main ones. I had the Barbies. That sounds like that sounds awesome. Like the dolls with like the stage. Like I was a fan of New Kids on the Block. You know, fast forward and there's been many bands I'm a fan of. And so guess what? If they came to town, I would buy a ticket to the concert. If they released a sweatshirt or a hoodie or a shirt, I would buy the shirt. So let me know. And Nathaniel goes, what did I just walk into? And so some people are maybe a casual listener of a certain band and they listen to that band online. Other people are true fans. If that person comes to their area, they might get on a, a on a, a plane. They might fly to go listen to an artist uh, or support them, whatever it takes, right? Now, today, these days, I'm becoming a super fan of certain uh, running brands. I'm really into running. So I'm really getting into Asics. And like I'm obsessed with different types of Asics running shoes as I'm into um, Asics. And so I don't just necessarily buy one pair of shoes a year now. I'm like trying different ones. So Asics can count on me to pay them at least like a hundred dollars a year. Like I just got some Dynaflight threes. Those are a hundred. I just found the Nova Blast shoes and I uh, actually bought them from a different website, but it's all going to track back to, to Asics. So I'm spending at least a hundred, 200, $300 a year on Asics with my running habit. And I'm this fan of Asics shoes. What are you a super fan or a true fan of that? Whatever you're following, they release something new, they release something cool and you're all in with it. Tyler Woods, he's got 28 pairs of shoes. You know what I mean? BGS life's like, yeah, new kids on the block. I was all in with Joey. Come on. I remember Joey. And so so think about um, something you're a super uh, a super fan of. Now, let's say you got 5,000 YouTube subscribers, 10,000 YouTube subscribers. A portion of them are the people who really connect with you. Got it? So when you've got 1,000 true fans, that means when you release something, you put something out into the world, they're like, man, I, I get her, I get him, I'm all in. So they're going to buy the thing that you sell. That's the point. So imagine you had a $37 product, for example. Over one year's time, you've got 12 months to do this, okay? You sell 83 units per month through YouTube, through going live, through Facebook Live, whatever you're doing, through podcasting. That's 2.7 per day. That would be a $37,000 a year income. Now, that is roughly a teacher's income here in the United States where I'm streaming from and recording this right now. So... For example, Flyride, who's one of our Video Ranking Academy and Inner Circle students, he actually has a hoodie on his Teespring. Now, I understand there's fees. I get it. There, I understand. Like, But just go with me for a second. It costs $38.99 to buy that hoodie. All right? Flyride automo Automotive Lighting. Now, let's say he is actually going to do a merch drop. What is that? When you release a limited line of merch until it sells out and then it's gone. Let's say you did that just four times a year. You did a summer, fall, winter, spring merch release. Now, this could be journals, right? This could be a lot of different things, all right? And hit like if you're getting value out of the uh, training so far. Let's even say you're gonna make $25 profit from it. Cause again, you you use like a Teespring or some kind of a, a T-shirt, print house, print on demand, and, and I, maybe it's not that, just follow me, okay? You with me? So you're gonna do four 1,000 unit merch drops a year, spring, summer, fall, winter. So that means you're 1,000 true fans, you're 1,000 super fans, they're gonna buy that out and you're gonna profit $25,000 in spring, $25,000 in summer, 
$25,000 in fall and $25,000 in winter. Do you see how powerful that is? That is a $100,000 a year income from um, putting a product, selling something as a creator to your super fans with your 3,000 subscribers, 7,000. You might be saying, Sean, I'm just starting. Well, this is something to build up to, but here's the good news. You don't have to get a million subscribers or 100,000 or even 50,000 for this to be super practical. And I'm gonna be sharing some examples. So buckle your seatbelt because we're, the rabbit hole goes deeper. And I just broke down a $100,000 a year income, which is pretty extraordinary, especially to have a life on your own terms, freedom. Imagine this is all you did in a year. Now in the year, you get to make videos, go live, DM people back, post on social media, biz dev with brands, email people, go to events, connect, collaborate. This is the way you're earning money. Like all you gotta do is sell, uh, you know, 2.7 units a day, as we described in, in the prior one to potentially make like 30 to 40 to 100K a year. Powerful, right? Now, it is my belief that while there are cool things to sell, like you could do merch, you could try and get people really pumped about your Rise and Grind coffee cups. It could be anything that there is something that I believe for YouTube creators and entrepreneurs at large that the best industry to get in and the best product to sell is digital products, specifically online courses. And here's why. Forbes did an article, this is kind of an older article now, that said e-learning, that means people that want to learn things online through online courses is climbing to a $325 billion a year industry by 2025. So if you wanna know what's the next thing, Sean, what's happening in the next five years, what's the next wave, it's this. Now this research, came out before the lockdown and the pandemic. So this number has only gone up. We're seeing e-learning, online learning, digital learning explode across the planet. And people are looking for, this does include universities, colleges that have online courses, but this also includes, even if you look at this article, they mentioned things like lynda.com, which is now LinkedIn Learning, Udemy, Skillshare, as well as the ability to maybe host your own online course with Teachable, Thinkific, Kajabi. I know I'm throwing a lot of things at you there, but this is the e-learning industry. And I believe that online education, that packaging, promoting, and profiting from your knowledge is the best thing you could do as a YouTube creator. But let me state a few other important beliefs. I believe that when you're positioning yourself on YouTube, there's really two big categories. There's entertainment and there's education. Entertainment is someone, I want to be a famous vlogger. I want to be a comedian. Amazing. But that doesn't lend itself as much to positioning yourself to create an online course. However, if you plant your flag in a niche of education, it could be helping people learn how to do woodworking. It could be people helping learn how to do quilts um, and quilting and sewing. It could be uh, helping people create music. It could be helping people learn guitar or piano. It could be helping people learn social media or digital marketing. If you have a, an education-based YouTube channel, it actually leads perfectly into monetizing your knowledge and monetizing your content through an online course really well. In fact, talking to people from Thinkific, I was at a conference before the lockdown, March first, 2020, around that time, before things really started locking down. And I was talking to Thinkific and they said this, YouTube creators are their uh, most successful users because they have a platform that lets you host your online course. And we'll put a list of some of our top recommendations in the description of this Coffee with Cano episode on our Think Marketing YouTube channel. And but Thinkific is a good one. And they said that they're most successful. And it makes sense because if someone's discovering you, they're trying to learn an, a foreign language, they're trying to learn a particular skill, they're trying to learn skateboarding. People do this in how to increase your jump and learn basketball skills or learn soccer. Online learning, as people are locked down, 
is this massive industry and it's the best way to make a full-time living with a small channel or a small audience. All you need is 1,000 true fans. And let's go a little bit deeper and look at a couple of examples. So this is one of our students, McCain Dogs. They have actually a brick and mortar, 70 employee dog training business in Canada, right? Where you can bring them their dogs, your dogs to them. They've also got a very successful YouTube channel. Mid size though, when I say very successful, it's not a million subscribers, it's not half a million. And they've packaged their knowledge though, just as one stream of income into their business in a course called My Dog Can, online dog training. And you're able to get a step-by-step -step instruction from a professional dog trainer in an online course. Now, again, if that course is, let's say a hundred dollars, then, and they have a thousand true fans from their 30,000 subscriber YouTube channel that can't be there locally with their business, they could earn an extra $100,000 a year from selling that online course in a 12 month period of time. Isn't that crazy? And that's just using this rounded number of $100,000 per year. Here's another example. You remember Fly Ride, he's got the hoodie. Well, this is a much, we talked about it earlier as merch. So he's a part of our inner circle monthly coaching program. And his channel is about learn the what, how, and why of auto lighting, like creating custom um, headlights for your import cars and whatnot. And he's actually packaged, created an online course, lightingcourse.com five months to five figures of how to build lights as a side hustle. So what he's actually training people to do is learn how to uh, purchase the raw materials or to purchase lights and flip them online. And I've got another friend locally here in Vegas that is, is doing the same kind of, he's got like a little warehouse, he started in his garage and he started like flipping auto parts and whatnot. So a lot of times the way people are doing this, and this is how you can rise above recession and really recession proof your business. You could take what you do in your business, if you're a business owner, and also package like how you do it in an online course to create an extra stream of income. And YouTube is the best place to position your business and your brand to do so. So this began, Chris has got things like YouTube ads, affiliate marketing, the ability to actually create these custom lights and build the lights and flip lights and actually earn money from it. But he also is creating a course on how he does it or how you can do it too and earn money from it and creating an extra stream of income around it. See how powerful this is? Let me know what your aha moment so far from this training and how this could apply to your channel and your brand in the comments below. Here is a place called Udemy. Not necessarily a place where I recommend you host your course, but it is a public online course marketplace. And you can see people doing things like complete guitar system, uh, how, you know, how to play guitar. And these are online courses that cost like $12 um, or two, $200 for different lectures and training so you can learn how to play guitar online. So what's a skill or a passion that you could teach? And let's actually look for a second. What are people making online courses about? If we actually go to Udemy, let's check out something like, like uh, using lighting design to transform your home. And I didn't whip that out of nowhere. I just, I lo looked this up earlier. So here's an online course for how to use lighting design to transform your home. So you're gonna learn three layers of light to create a cohesive dramatic lighting screen scheme in any room. It's two hours of video. It's eight articles, there's some downloadable resources. So this is gonna teach people in to how to use lighting to do interior design like a pro. This course is $94.99. And Udemy actually tells us how many students this course has. So there's actually 6,170 students in this online course. So if we look at $94.99 in the lifetime of this course being out, and it was updated recently, so I'm not sure when it was first created, Let's just multiply that by how many students are inside of the course. We can see that this course has earned $586,088. Let me, let me say that again. That's over half a million dollars from selling an online course that Erica here created. Do you see how powerful that is? And here's what I want to encourage you with. I know that might get you pumped. You're like half a million. What are we talking about? Like 
There is such a powerful long tail to this to where people are earning. And what I mean by long tail is some people are earning multiple millions a year, a million a year, multiple six figures a year. But some people are earning an extra $30,000 a year, $5,000 a year, an extra two grand a year, in addition to multiple streams of income, monetizing their influence, their YouTube channel, and their knowledge. This is the best way to go full time with a small audience. There's critical elements to succeeding at this and to really breaking through the noise. But what I want you to see is literally how powerful this can be. Let's look at just another quick example here. If we talk about drawing, let's talk about drawing, a skill of drawing. And you think about maybe all these different parents, all these people that are at home that maybe want uh, to help their kids learn how to draw. And let's just kind of dig even deeper. Let's go not at the top result. Let's let's look at something um, a little bit deeper down here, how to draw cute cartoon characters. Okay, great. So we look at this and it's a $54.99 online course. Now picture, you have a YouTube channel, you're creating uh, free content on there, you're learning how to grow your YouTube channel and you're, you're building up fans in general. And some of those people become true fans. They're like, hey y'all, I got a course out. If you wanna go check it out, here's the link or links in the description below. And there's lots of different key skills to learn in order to market, promote, and sell your online course. But that conversation is for another day. So this course costs $54.99 and there's 15,210 students in this particular course. That's $836,000 that this course has earned. I don't know about you, but that is kind of a jaw drop moment. Like, wow, this is nuts. I could package, promote, and profit from what I know. This is how I can turn my passion into profit and pairing YouTube with an education-based YouTube channel and packaging your knowledge in an online course is critical. Now, I understand there is a lot of different questions and there's plenty of pitfalls that people fall into that get them stuck when it comes to this. And that's a lot about what our channel Think Marketing and our Think Marketing podcast is about. So make sure you're subscribed to the Think Marketing YouTube channel, the Think Marketing podcast. And remember that we're also, we do have some accelerators like our monthly coaching program that does help you with this. But let's look at um, a couple quick examples and then I'm gonna bring some guests on the show. So let's say, just to make this simple, you've got an online course that's $97, okay? I know it could be cheaper. It could be more expensive. There's a large range. And so if you wanted to earn $97,000 a year, you would only need to sell 1,000 of these a year. And let me say it again. This is assuming now, this is not you probably at this point side hustling anymore. This isn't like, man, I gotta go to work and then build my YouTube. This is like, all year long, I get it. You got to do the kids and you got the other things, you know, happening in your life's responsibilities, but could you live off $97,000 a year? Let me know in the comments. Like, could you live off that? Could that be a good starting point for you? Or maybe, maybe you've got 22 kids and you live in the center of Manhattan and you couldn't cause you're like, I mean, that's 97. It's not going to cut it where my cost of living, but for probably a lot of us, depending on where we are, uh, in the world, $97,000 a year might be a great income or a good baseline. So let me know. So imagine being able to devote your full focus to serving people, creating content, building your marketing, your messaging, and all those types of things, right? You could do this, right? $97 course, a thousand a year. But let's be super practical, like even really practical and say, you know, in year one, at the end of the year, you could only sell 250. And all your hustle, you're still learning, you're still studying, you're leveling up, dialing in your message, even dialing in your course, whatever it is. If in year one, you only sold 250, that would be $24,250. And maybe that's a side hustle year. Man, I got stuff to do. I got my main job. I'm doing this on the weekends. I'm working on some other stuff. I'm building this stuff out. Can you see how practical that could be? And then of course, you get better at the skill set of packaging, promoting, and profiting from your knowledge online. So in year two, man, you sell 500. So now you had a $50,000 year. Now keep in mind that when you're doing this in particular on YouTube, you might also have some affiliate links in the description to some videos. 
You're also making YouTube ads uh, off the viewership of your videos. You might even have a brand that wants to work with you and they want to pay you to make a video because there's a lot of different ways you can create income streams. So this is just the income from your course. So you might make 50 K in that year, that second year on your online course, but then you might make another 5k in YouTube ads or 15 K in affiliate marketing. And it really can snowball with all the multiplicity of ways there is to earn money in the new economy. And then number three, like year three, you got this thing dialed in, like give yourself three years to get better, learn the skills, level up. Do you see how powerful that would be? And even if you're going what you would perceive as slower than somebody else. Like I think about how much time I to, that it took me to learn this. I mean, by now we've actually earned multiple seven figures in online courses uh, through Think Media. But there was years where I was just investing in courses and going to events and watching trainings like this one and still trying to figure it out. Being like, dude, I got a million questions and it takes time. Like it definitely is what, what I hear about in this industry is the easy myth. Like, I'm not trying to make this look overly easy. I'm not trying to say it's easy. I'm just trying to show you it's worth it and it's practical. So once you actually see a clear vision of, wow, okay, what's my niche going to be? What am I going to package? What's my online course going to be? What's what's my positioning? What's What's my difference? And then what are the skills that I need to learn to do this? This could build up year after year after year and really eventually give you a freedom-based business where you have the autonomy to, again, you can do this kind of thing working from wherever you want. This is the kind of business that you can do with a laptop and a USB mic and a webcam. Like there's, it's an incredibly powerful business. And it makes me think of like Matthew. So Matthew um, is, uh, he's got 34,000 subscribers, weekly videos to help you create music. So it's an education channel, right? And Matthew is building an email list. And we talk about that in other episodes of the Think Marketing Podcast. And so he's got like free drum sounds for the MPC. So you actually give him, um, you sign up to get these free sounds because he helps you with the MPC, a music creation tool. And then he lets people know like, hey, if you want my seven hours where I go through all the functions of the MPC, learn what the buttons do, learn how to program them, and he has a $37 course. And Matthew's a nurse, is his main main hustle, his main job, and super grateful for him for especially this year and serving in the midst of a pandemic. But he's out there serving people and helping people. And he basically recently told us, he's a part of our inner circle community. He's said that he basically has matched his monthly income of his day job with his online income. What he's been doing is taking most of that money to reinvest in himself and his learning and scale and gear and equipment because he's got a vision for what he wants to do. So he's basically do a part uh, a place right now where he can go part time or even really full time if he stretched it. But he's compounding both things. And it's not just his YouTube channel and AdSense and affiliate marketing of the tech and other things. But he has packaged, learned how to promote and is profiting from his knowledge online. This is Manny who is a speaker, really preacher, itinerant minister. And he actually got crushed at the beginning of 2020 because all of his speaking gigs got canceled. The way he made his living and paid his mortgage for him and his wife, Tia, was he had 24 speaking gigs coming up this year. They all got canceled. So he actually went all in and packaged his knowledge in an online course called Speakeasy to start help other pe to help other people learn how to particularly teach the Bible, preach more powerfully. Again, a skill he'd built up, something he'd been investing had been investing in for years. My question is, what's a skill? What's something you know? And what can happen is you sometimes undervalue what you know and what's already inside of you. Things you've just learned in life like Gardening just comes easy for you. And you're like, you're awesome at gardening. You keep the aphids away. Your neighbor's garden, all their plants are dying. All of yours are flourishing. Like whatever, like there's different skills that can be very practical that you could package, promote and profit from. And he completely replaced his income by moving online. And again, rose above recession specifically in this year. And so um, we have an episode on the Think Marketing Podcast with Manny where you can learn some powerful tips from him. And again, these are all just uh, other people that are part of 
our inner circle program. And so his speakeasy course, $59, 10 part e-course, and it helps you become a better speaker, particularly for like youth speakers, pastors, conference speakers, and people that want to learn kind of how to teach the Bible, things like that. This is Nicole from Kids OT Help. She's a kid's occupational therapist. And same example, she's got a new mama bundle offer where a lot of things that new mamas need to learn. It's $333. She's actually created a couple of different online courses, but um, that one is a bundle of her trainings. So what is a skill? Tell me in the comments. What is a skill you have? Maybe maybe you already have an education-based YouTube channel or what is just a skill you, you have that possibly could be packaged into an online course? Let me know below. And listen, over the next five years, this industry is growing to, as Forbes told us, to a $325 billion a year industry. That's how much money is going to be going into e-learning and people wanting to learn remote, learn on their own terms, learn from home. And as those numbers grow, especially with the lockdown, basically here's what we're talking about. That means by 2025, this is going to be a billion dollar a day industry. Let me say that again. That's, that's billion with a B per day in 2025. I hope you're glad you're watching this Coffee with Cano right now. Because what we're revealing here is that this is the beginning of a major wave. Like this, is, it's just kind of like looking back and being like, shoot, I should have invested in Amazon stock. You know what I mean? Like if you would have invested like 10 grand in Amazon stock back in like 1998, you'd literally, I don't know, you know, be like ridiculous today. Or like you look back, you're like, man, I should have, should have saw that Tesla thing coming. Come on, Elon Musk. I just want you to see that this is coming. And so if there's skills to learn, which there are, if there's even positioning for you, what's my position? What's my channel about, man? How do I build this whole like potentially knowledge business empire? Well, you got time, but it's time to go all in because you want to position yourself now to again, ride the wave. Like when the surf is good, one of my friends, Jeff Morris, who lives in Southern California, when the surf is good, he goes out and he rides. He wants to see that opportunity and go ride the wave when it's good. When there's nothing there, he chills at home and sips coffee and hangs out with his family. So when you see a wave coming, that's the time to position yourself. That's the time to level up. That's the time to lean in. So let me know if you have any questions about that. And we're going to bring some guests on to the Coffee with Cannell show today. Today's episode is brought to you by talkwiththink.com. If you ever have any questions about our courses or our uh, monthly coaching program or any of the things that we do um, that help uh, people really in two big areas, our company helps people. Number one, we help people grow their YouTube channels and really dominate YouTube and figure out how to crack the code on YouTube, how to create the right content, rank your videos, get views 24 seven, 365, how to really succeed on YouTube. But the second part of our business is helping people um, build their influence and package their knowledge in an online course. You know, we have over 10 different income streams in Think Media. We do brand deals, we do affiliate marketing, we do a lot of other things. But in light of what's happening in culture and in this current wave, and because we have now really perfected our process of helping people succeed by packaging their knowledge in an online course and YouTubers being the best people to do that, like YouTube creators and entrepreneurs using YouTube with an education-based channel is absolutely the best niche to do. So we basically help you through the whole process. And for those that are part of growth video, we book down our 10 step process. So you know how that all works. Um, if you got any questions about that, talkwiththink.com, link in the description down below for that. Um, this is Coffee with Cannell, the show where I bring you on to answer your questions. Let me know your biggest aha moment. Let me know what you're sipping on, what you're drinking today. And I'm excited to bring some people on. Um, my question uh, or quick update, if you didn't hear, I'm about to have a baby and you know, we haven't even been scheduling these things because baby's actually due tomorrow, but we got a friend in town that's here to help Sonia and they've been like cleaning the garage and like taking stuff to the Goodwill and like they just got some food. They're watching TV right now. So if I got to run out of here because some water breaks, then, then uh, it was great hanging out. But um, we are literally about to have our first son, Sean Bradley Cannell at any moment. So that's the life update. And uh, my wife, Sonia, is very pregnant, 40 weeks pregnant tomorrow. And so uh, we're excited about that. And um, with that, 
Uh, I'm excited to uh, bring some people on today. We've got uh, Keith in the house. What is up, Keith? It's good to see you, bro. Inner Circle fam. And uh, tell everybody what you do, what your channel's about, and uh, then let me know how I can help today. All right. So first of all, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. I'm Keith Williams, and my channel is Better With Improv, and we help you discover what's next. With lessons learned from improv, we, we do a lot of different applied improv for leadership and for life and, and business. Um, first of all, let me start with, uh, I can't believe you're here with the baby coming. Like, dude, I'm, I'm like, it's any, you're overdue, right? So uh, that's exciting, man. So congratulations and uh, I pray and wish for the best for you. Um, here's why I'm, um, I've hopped on. Something weird happened this week. I've been diddling with TikTok and uh, I've been teaching improv and doing fun TikTok stuff. And I did this improv rap battle with Token, who's some you know, big time rapper, and I went viral. Okay, and uh, 500,000 views in a week. And we gained, I don't know, we went from 2,000 view followers to 17,000. Okay, so from that, people have come over. We've given some free improv classes. We've gotten some freemiums going. And it's just been a wild week just from that. And, and uh, so TikTok itself is just a, a vessel. My original plan was just go over there, direct people over to, to, to YouTube. So here's my question. Now that I have this new audience, and many of them are really, really interested in improv itself, do I, A, try to direct them over to YouTube, which is what I've been doing, saying, hey, I want you to subscribe over here. You're going to get deeper content and really from there my sales funnel starts or b uh, get them right into my sales funnel from tiktok directly into um you know learning more taking classes signing up for courses etc yeah that's a great question and great job at uh jumping on again new trends new uh platforms and um i think keith especially because you're part of our community do you have your sales process set up? And the question, meaning, you know, your opt-in that if somebody goes to your landing page and enters their name and email, that the rest happens through an autoresponder and through follow-up content or a free training or any, is that built yet? Yes. Yes. So I have it built using Squarespace. Yes. So I have. Uh, and what I, do they get there? Well, so the, for the first freemium, I have freemiums that come from YouTube that uh, they get uh, documents, how to how to get the most out of online improv. What's the uh, URL? Uh, the URL is uh, betterwithimprov.com. And for the, for the page, uh, let's see, I think it's warmups. Let me see here, hold on a second. Let me slash warmups. Hold on. I'm Warm up games or? It is. Oh. Yeah, slash warmups. I think so. Better with improv.com. And then right on the homepage, we have a link. Yeah. So this is, yeah. I mean, I think what the, the key is relevancy is key to having this stuff work online. Yeah. So looking for a great way to warm up your meetings, download this free guide. This is great. And then people that specifically want to, this would be, of course, business leaders, decision makers, the people that would be right for you. Um, they could go to that page and then enter their name and email. And then your whole process that could lead to building your business happens. The key, I think, is when you look at a platform like TikTok, is a lot of people, all this new audience that's watching you going viral with this rapper recently, probably isn't your right audience. And that's okay because there's something about going wide, but then there's something about also going deep to build our businesses. The, the move to make on TikTok is, is what your is both in, in what you said. When I mean, when I say both use it to grow your YouTube channel, sure. Use it to send people to this page. Great. And the key though, is to be really okay with potentially, um, not exciting vanity metrics. So here's my point. Yeah. When we create something that's funny, clever, creative, and it goes viral on TikTok, 
it's, it may be being viewed by people of all ages that are just, if you not are like right ideal client or customer, which is great. But then you do a, a next post that maybe here's the key is like really polarizing or almost like meant to not do very well. Not that you, you want it to go as viral as possible, but it's actually really more meant to just speak directly to the right person that would benefit from this. Chances are your 17,000 new followers are not leading that many meetings. Correct. Maybe 1% of them are. So what messaging does that 1% need to hear? What TikTok could you create? Hear me. That is still creative. That hopefully is still entertaining. That still has value, but then leads people to say, and if you want yeah. these three fun and powerful ways to uh, connect with your, you know, to build your teams for team building activities, yeah. then you actually give a call to action to a URL. It's difficult for them. They'd have to go type it in or whatever, but potentially if out of your 17,000 followers, a hundred are interested in that, maybe 10 want to go download this and then maybe one becomes a customer and your mastery of that messaging and relevancy and congruency is how you just keep and. Not only is how you keep doing this, but even in this training, we talked about 2.7 sales a day. Eventually, once you're proven sales process and your buy button, all that stuff is built, you can have fun on social media all day long by just thinking new and creative ways to sort of send the right people or attract the right people to a particular form of messaging. And alternatively, what might be better than sending them to this page is exactly what you're doing is attracting them to your YouTube channel. But one of the biggest mistakes we can make as online entrepreneurs is actually truly trying to reach everybody. And I'm guilty of this. I just, I, we all want the big numbers. Like, okay, what will get the most clicks? What will get the most likes? What will get the mm -hmm. most comments? It's not a very good question to ask. The better question, if you want to do this full time, is what will get the most customers? Right. Who is my ideal client? What will attract my ideal client? What can I do to go wide to, if you will, serve and entertain and help a lot of people. But then how can I narrow that down with really relevancy in my messaging? And I would then leverage TikTok. And as we land the plane, I think what's exciting is that this then opens the window to all kinds of platforms. Because once you sort of get your knowledge business dialed in, as you know, we can go on LinkedIn, a new platform like you're doing, a new platform like TikTok or Instagram Reels comes out and we start experimenting with a new tool or a new platform on social media, but it's all with a purpose. Why? Because we've built our online business first and we're dialing in our online business as well. Is that making sense? I mean, what do you think with that? Uh, okay, so you said a lot and let me let me give you some, some great news with that. First of all, the trainings that I learned here with you, with, um, with this particular program, with the Inner Circle, with VR, all that stuff is, is applicable there. So A, sifting through all of the, all of the, thousands of general people who came over for some some hip hop thing who's who wants to learn improv who's who's my audience and again like you said you're going to get tens not thousands right you're going to get less than 100 people we've already just by going live uh and said hey who anybody would take a free uh, improv for acting class i had a full class people came in they now definitely want to take the course so so yes number 2 the sales pages they're different sales pages based on where they come from so Depends on the YouTube video, what we're teaching, what what the freemium is. So TikTok has three. TikTok has direct links to websites, to YouTube, to. So I don't have they don't have to manually do anything. I can certainly send them to a link tree or send them to my sales page, depending on what we're doing. Number four is um, is that yes, the viral video itself got the attention. Now that I have your attention. We did some follow-ups. We did. We said, okay, how do I just straight do a talking head teaching improv? We didn't do that. What we did was we said, okay, we're gonna teach it through this hip hop. So we now, so we did the 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 improv commandments using the ten dual commandments from Hamilton. So we did improv Hamilton style with rap, taught it, did a four part series, and then did another uh, rap challenge after it. And all of a sudden, the audience grew. And people are like, man, I love improv. And now I'm, if you love improv, you get to follow back and then they become part of my community. And so again, we send them that way. What I what I want to make sure um, what I was talking to you about here is, you know, again, because I'm still trying to grow YouTube. I'm so distracted by this TikTok. It's like, do I try to get everybody over? And you answered that by saying yes. But I also need to get them into an appropriate sales funnel based on the appropriate 
um, thing that I'm offering. And there, of course, are multiple sales pages and funnels for that. Uh, I don't know if that made sense backward to you. No, I love it. I, you got it, Keith. And I appreciate you so much. And I'm super grateful that you've been a part of our various communities. Uh, and um, it's amazing to see your success, man, all the different doors of opportunity opening and you crushing it on multiple platforms. Yeah. This stuff works, man. That's why I'm, uh, dude, I'm telling you, what, what you're doing is amazing. And uh, and Heather and, and Grow With Video Live, like I said, a huge success. Very proud of it. Um, under the circumstances, you guys hit like a grand slam home run, in my opinion. So congratulations. Great job on that. Well, thanks, Keith. Hey, I appreciate you so much. And thanks for coming on Coffee with Cannell. Thanks, bro. Cheers. All right, friends, Coffee with Cannell. I hope you're rising and grinding. Hit the like button if you've been getting some insights out of this uh, video so far. Coming up next on the show, we've got John in just a second. Um, but uh, I hope that you're maybe taking some notes and thinking about how does this apply to your business and your brand? You might have a lot of different ideas spinning around in your mind. You might have a lot of different uh, ideas happening. Um, but uh, at the end of um, the day, congruency, relevance, alignment with your audience. One of the biggest mistakes people are making on social media is they're only trying to go viral. They're only trying to potentially reach a lot of people. And, and at social media, step one is you do got to get attention. But then step two is you want to make sure you're attracting the right people. And you want to potentially be polarizing to other people. So what I mean is maybe a lot of people watch your YouTube channel, but they're not one of your 1,000 super fans. You want to create a journey for people to be on that there's almost like a gateway where people go, I don't want to walk through that. But the person who does is the ideal person that you can help, you can serve with your content, and eventually your online course or your coaching or whatever it is. And so, uh, man, it's cool to see what Keith is doing. And we've got uh, John on the show. John, how's it going? Um, tell me a little bit about your business, your brand, and what you're up to. All right. So uh, first off, thanks. Appreciate you having me on. And um, congrats on baby Sean, because that's awesome and exciting. Um, so I, right now I do gaming. So hence the PC. It's a uh, Clash of Clans and Brawl Stars. I actually started it because my dad, 74, he plays the game. He needed some videos. So I kind of helped him out and it kind of grew and I had a little following, but I can't, I'm, I have three kids, so I'm investing time away and I need to monetize. So I kind of pivoted uh, with Grow With Video Live and it gave me a lot of insight. I'm a graphic design and marketer by trade. And so I figured why not do design for life uh, with John Feldhaus, and that's my name. So uh, kind of get my name out there. I have feldhaus.net, and then I'm just gonna kind of build a brand from there. I have, for my first video, I kind of want to do um, marketing and design, and I wanted to put some courses together. So what I was kind of thinking, based on your feedback from Grow With Video, is have um, a couple video series, and then lump them together, and then I can actually do like a course more detailed with that. Um, and then that would be kind of like design wise, because I think that's going to be the quicker route. So I kind of wanted to see what your thought process was. Do I go higher value or do I go quicker to get executed? Because I know I could knock those design videos out really quick versus a marketing because marketing is so all over the place. So my, I, that's kind of my general question to you. Yeah. I love it, John. And thanks so much for being a part of uh grow with video live and, um, yeah, what I would say, not just to encourage you, but everybody watching, is we have a phrase in our brand that you heard, what's the shortest path to revenue? And part of something to think about with the shortest path is, um, you know, if you were to want to build a whole car, you could sell the car for a lot of money potentially, but it, you'd have to build a whole car. Alternatively, if you just sold some armor all dash cleaner, you might be able to get that product to market a lot faster because you're not actually building a car. You're just building one little piece comes with a microfiber cloth, spray the armor all on. Come on, any car fanatics like me, you would do the, the you'd have the leather and the armor all you'd have the tire cleaner. And if you detail your own car, all these different car, car products. So like what's a smaller product that you could get to market faster. And when it comes to online courses, we think about that as a mini offer, AKA, a tiny offer, AKA a baby offer. And um, 
it's one thing if you were to say, I have created the Photoshop Academy. It is 400 hours long. By the time you get to the end of it, you'll be able to 3D render, you know, it's not even really Photoshop, but you'll be able to literally do everything or like the beginner's jumpstart to achieving this result with say something like Photoshop and it could be anything. And you start thinking about a couple of things you want to get dialed in is exactly like, who is your target audience? The way to stand out in this thing is not to just create potentially a general core, uh, online course, but to really create it for a specific group of people, like helping teachers learn Photoshop because teachers now need to do their own gr graphic design for all the virtual e-learning. That's actually finding like a niche within a niche. It's finding a niche and you're a marketer. So you know what I'm talking about. So, uh, so it, it's something like that. It's creating something small that you could create fast market fast and get sales going quicker and even generate customers quicker. Um, that then you could then bolt on the next step. You could essentially use your armor all car cleaning product business to maybe even fund how hard it would be to create a manufacturing plant to build real cars. So it's, it's even a cool way that the new economy has created for us as online entrepreneurs to actually bootstrap and stack and fund multiple different projects. Does that make sense? You create a smaller offer, you get some stuff going, maybe eventually you get some help or you buy yourself some time or you buy yourself some leverage. So you could actually create something that's at a higher level. And you also have a built-in client base and potentially the ability to get some passive income and passive customers being generated because it's going to be easier to sell a product for $7 or $27 or $47. And then eventually you say, Hey, by the way, my new thing's out, my, my $500, my $1,000 full on Academy, my, my five day workshop where you come and we sit down, like whatever you want to do next, you sort of are like building out the customer journey as you go. These are hard worn one lessons that I learned. The first course I ever created was an Academy. And it stressed me the heck out, man. It was like, it was super long. I was overwhelmed. My head was like spaghetti trying to like think about. And then, you know, and, and things went good, but just learning from what I learned, creating Video Ranked Academy, which is amazing. And it's now gone through multiple iterations. We just recently overhauled the whole thing. Looking back, I would have created a tiny offer first. That was also, if you will, lower ticket, more affordable. And they talk about in, in business in general, that it's something like, a thousand times easier to sell something else to an existing customer than it is to even create a customer. And in marketing, cost per conversion, cost per customer can be astronomical. That becomes kind of the barrier to entry. It's like once you are a customer, I've been buying all this running clothes, workout clothes lately as I was going through 75 hard. <laughs> and I'm noticing how much retargeting these brands are doing like as soon as I hit their website or I make a purchase, dude, I'm they're hitting me everywhere. They're in my Instagram feed, Facebook. And I'm like, wow, the reason these products cost what they cost is because they are built into their whole sales process, the marketing margin to probably spend to sell me these designer running shorts for like $70. They're probably spending $35 to try to get me to become a customer at first. And they're doing it because they're berating. Anyways, you get kind of the idea. So as we land the plane, that's kind of what, is what I would think is I would think, how do you start with the shortest path to revenue um, and then give yourself some leverage and some cash? Cash is king. Cash flow is king. Cash is oxygen to your business. And then you're reinvesting that cash to scale up, build the next thing, get your YouTube channel growing more. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what I mean. I didn't want to just jump because I have all these awesome ideas. But as you know, uh, you know, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. So it's like I'd rather have something going and generating. But uh, sorry, my dog just wanted to say hello. He's uh, who's, who's that? Super needy. This is Gus. Gus. He's just, he, he lost his sister recently. So he's just been super whiny. And so I didn't want him to get all in the way, but I apologize for that diversion. Um, no, I'm glad Gus came on the show. We, uh, <laughs> we had two chihuahuas. We did lose one lately, although we lost Rosie. Sophie didn't seem to care too much. She's pretty independent. I think she was grateful that she was relieved of her annoying sister. Uh, but we have missed her dearly, but, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, no, it's all good. But congrats on the baby. Thank you so much for taking the time. I, I want to have you get to other people. So thank you so much. For sure, John. I appreciate you. Thank you. And take care, Gus. We'll see you. <laughs>
Um, all right, we're going to have Kat on in just a second, and then we got Techno Dad coming up. But um, what is your shortest path to revenue? Hey, tell me what you think it is in the comments or the live chat. Uh, click like if you've been getting value out of this training so far. And remember, today's episode is brought to you by Talk With Think. If you have been a part of our um, you know, business, our channel for a while, uh, whether you're watching on Facebook or or uh, YouTube, and you are kind of wondering how we could help you here at the Think Company, talkwiththink.com, and we can do a 15-minute discovery call. That's for you if you're serious. It's not a coaching call. It is to learn a little bit more about our accelerators. We have various programs that can help you reach your goals faster. Of course, we're always here to serve you with the Think Marketing Podcast, with the Think Media Channel, with the free content that we are sharing just like this to help you reach your goals. But we have some ways to get there faster. Like if you want all the steps in all the right order, then um, you can learn more about some of the things that we have at talkwiththink.com. We've got Kat on. Kat, how's it going? What is your, uh, what are, what are you up to? What's kind of your business or your brand and where are you joining us from today? I am on the West coast of Canada, Vancouver Island in BC. Um, and I, yeah, I do custom cards and gifts. Awesome. So, all kinds of things in that. And I think my fastest way to making money on that is to do a digital version of what I design rather than individual cards, which take time to make. Um, and that's fun, but it's also fun to teach it. So I actually had an affiliate question. Yep. Um, affiliate links. I did take, I did sign up with the Amazon and I'm curious as to how it exactly, the legal side of it, there seem to be a lot of rules with what you should post when you post their links and whether it qualifies you to actually make any money off it. Like I had a sale through my link, but it didn't qualify. I'm not quite sure why, or is there a simplified version of the legality so that we know what we have to post to include to make the link valid? Yeah, really good question. So when it comes to the Amazon Associates program in particular and affiliate marketing in particular, here's kind of a list of things to know as it as it pertains to compliance and um, of affiliate marketing. First is you do want to be familiar with the FTC, the Federal Trade Center guidelines. You're based okay. in Canada, which by the way, my wife, Sonia and I uh, grew up in kind of the Seattle area and we went to Vancouver Island, went uh, once on like a date. We went up, rode the ferry over, absolutely love it there. <laughs> and, um, and you're based in Canada, but you probably have viewers in Canada internationally and then also in the US. And YouTube's a US company. And so no matter where you're watching this in the world, um, you do want to be thinking about the US regulations of something like affiliate marketing. And so one of those is disclosures. Okay. And what we would typically do is, is have a, a, a disclosure, a disclaimer in the YouTube description above the affiliate links. And so in most think media or think marketing videos on YouTube, it'll say, this video is not sponsored mm -hmm. to let people know that it's not sponsored. Um, links below, assume links below are affiliate links, which means if you click them, we earn a small commission. And so we have that disclaimer usually there. And then usually another one lower that's even more detailed. So one of the things the FTC expects is that the, discla the disclaimer is actually above. It's not like buried at the bottom of your website, you know, in some corner, but it's actually ahead of uh, what people um, uh, can see it if they're going to click those links. Secondly, it actually is best to verbally disclose in the video if a link is an affiliate link. Okay. And so that is another thing. Now, Amazon's probably not going to actually be measuring those things. I'll get exactly to your question, but those are some of the best practices. Okay. Um, and, uh, YouTube also gives you a box you can check that says includes paid promotion. Some people think, do I need to check that? Well, you don't, you're not actually getting paid to promote anything. You may earn a commission if somebody clicks the link, uh, but but you should be fine there. And then across the board, depending on the website, depending on, it could be a blog, other websites like Facebook, th like different social media platforms might have different regulations about affiliate marketing. And what can happen is sometimes, especially when the channel is newer, sometimes it runs into issues. Like uh, we have, we're maybe so established and we just have a good reputation with YouTube. And I don't even mean, like anyone knows us. I mean, like just their bots, they're, they're like, okay, 
to think media has not had copyright strikes really they're you know they're they're a healthy channel we maybe just kind of quote unquote get away with things that maybe sometimes new channels are like i don't know like there's issues because youtube's bots and assume this about other social media platforms if a channel is brand new sometimes what they don't want they don't want black hat marketers, which simply means people with like kind of a, a scammy or spammy agenda, mm -hmm. just create a new channel, stuff links, try to like rank videos, try to siphon dollars out of, so they, they like, you just kind of want to think about compliance. And usually if you've got a channel like crafting and custom mm -hmm. cards and you're creating good, valuable content, you also should be fine in regards to those types of things. Now, where Amazon gives you that open window of time for those that want to sign up for the Amazon Associates program, right? You sign up and a lot of times you'll get approved quickly these days, but they say you have to make a certain number of qualified sales within a certain window of time. And yeah. it's kind of hard to say what those qualified sales are. For some, sometimes maybe what they try to do is someone clicks, uh, you click your own links to buy things. Maybe you don't even mean to, or maybe somebody that is on your IP address or a similar IP address okay. and Amazon's paying attention to uh, say those sales do not qualify. The other thing is that it is very frustrating, but when you are just starting out, it seems like you will see, okay, I made four sales. I made one sale. I made five sales and Amazon seems to, this is just kind of my opinion. So I'm kind of going from conjecture here. If you don't hit critical mass of sales, maybe from a diverse source of buyers, meaning more than just a handful, then they mm -hmm. don't start crediting you yet. Like if you only yeah. make a couple sales, they're like, it's not enough to hit qualification yet. We have so many people that are um, making sales, like in our Video Reggae Academy program and kind of running into this, I see there's like six sales, but they say they're not qualified. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, Amazon's always updating their terms of service and whatnot. And they can say what a qualified sale is. What that could also be is sometimes you might make a sale that actually is not an, it doesn't relate to any earning any money with affiliate marketing. Like it could be someone clicks your link, purchases an Amazon Prime movie rental for $4.99 and it's a sale, but it's actually not something that you earn anything from. So that's just another example. There's a couple of things happening in the middle there. So my final advice is to establish your channel. Think about your, disclo your disclaimers, you know, always be above board, what we call white hat online marketing, which just means like ethical, transparent mm -hmm. versus black hat. And uh, you, and then just put out good content, but really, grow your influence first. Influence comes first, income comes second. And in our Video Ranking Academy program, we talk about hitting around, making it a goal to have around 200 to 300 views a video and to be making videos that directly lead to sales so that you're not just making like a sale here or there, but you actually hit a tipping point of having some momentum on the channel and having videos that lead to sales, meaning videos that like if you reviewed the best scissors for, uh, you know, creating crafts. And that actually had some serious traffic and interest around it. So that video kind of like Jennifer, uh, from the sewing report in our community, she did a review of one of the best budget sewing machines. That video has like 80,000 views. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are looking for it. A lot of people want to know the budget machine. They find that it's this brother machine. She teaches mm -hmm. how to use it. And she's selling like a lot of sewing machines. She hit a tipping point of generating qualified sales. And there is some sort of a tipping point that kind of kicks your account over to Amazon's like, okay, you're good. And from there you just scale up. Does that make okay. sense? Any questions about that? No, no, it does. That makes perfect sense. The affiliate links, I was just a little bit dubious and I only put one on like two different videos and I kind of had a sale, but I was like looking at my stats and how did it not qualify? I just thought I'd done it wrong, put the wrong thing down. And I didn't want to continue to do that. I haven't had a video on for a few weeks. I moved house and then did this massive conference. I was really busy with that. Um, it was epic, by the way, guys. Um, and I just haven't had a chance. So I feel guilty now I haven't posted a video for three weeks. I'm going to start VRA next week. Um, and so I think I just keep taking those steps and I'll add the link slowly and little by little build it up, I think. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, I think uh, 
exactly what you just said, and, and I'm grateful you're part of Grow a Video Live, and that is exactly what can happen though, is time off away from momentum. I wanna see you know multiple videos coming out mm -hmm. with multiple affiliate links in them and encourage you, you absolutely are on the right track. Critical mass is almost like thinking, hitting a tipping point, critical mass is like releasing five videos in a row, all that are related to affiliate marketing to like really get the snowball going. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. let's like, let's like do like a mini launch and, and maybe a couple of those videos are tutorials and helpful, but a couple of them mm -hmm. are your favorite crafting custom cards kind of products. So you just come out strong to quote unquote launch yeah. your affiliate income business. Does that make sense? It makes sense. I use a really flashy cutting machine and a lot of people are looking for comparisons. So that's, that's given me some really good ideas. Thanks, Sean. Brilliant. Congrats on the baby. We can't wait to see pictures. Oh, thank you so much, Kat. Hey, I appreciate you. And thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. Bye. Coffee with Cano, my friends, the show where we are helping you build your influence, your income with online video and taking your influence and your knowledge and packing, packaging that in um, an online course. Package it, promote it, and profit from what you know. We've got Chana the techno dad on the show, a DJ. Yes, you can catch his DJ sets on his channel, a DJ by trade. Yes, you can hire him to DJ your next event and also a home theater expert crushing it. Chana, what, what's happening in your business lately, dog? I mean, you got like money flowing in from multiple streams. Um, what's been working for you lately? Um, you know what? Um, oddly enough, not editing videos. That's that's been working. So like this, I sit down, start talking about stuff. Um and live like stream kind of, or just recording. Yeah, yeah, live stream. Live and stream. then are you talking about some gear and some home theater stuff or yeah, yeah, mostly about like TVs because you know these they're changing all these HDMI specs and all this kind of stuff. And there's new information all the time. And you know, I was like, well, let's see, it could take me 15 minutes to record the video, three hours to edit it, and then you know, make a thumbnail and all that kind of stuff. So like that one, that one that, yeah. So that was a live stream. Um, I did what Tuesday and it's got 3,700 views. And I would just, when I see the, you know, um, the people watching counter, I would just reiterate what the topic is and just kind of yeah. go back to it. Um, and Are that you using had like a yard or something. Yeah. I was using stream yard just to, to, just to, you know, bring everybody's, you know, uh, comments or questions. And then I would just go through Q and a, and I would just try to put up pretty much every comment if it was, you know, clean. Um, and then um, the video I did last week is, already, is almost at 10,000 views. Uh, that future proof one. Yeah. This one right here. That's another live stream. Yeah. See stream. That one's at 9,600. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm like, I'm like, man, I just, I don't need to edit videos if it's a topic that I know a lot about. So, um, so that's been working out pretty well. Um, I think. You know, maybe I'll do one of those with an edited video, so two videos a week, um, and just kind of, kind of keep the content coming out there. But um, you know, I'm actually starting my first, uh, um, what is it, digital product? So, nice. So um, I know John was on here earlier, and he was talking about he had all these great ideas, and you know, I had all this stuff. You know, I have a website already. I have a a press kit already haven't touched those in like a year. Okay. And it's just because there's all this other stuff going on. But recently I got connected with this company uh, for an affiliate program and they are allowing me their big, big time distributor and, and, you know, retailer. Um, so they're allowing me $4,000 worth of gear to review per month. So I'm like, Dang. Oh, I can get two TVs per month to review for the channel. So that's kind of like what I've been doing. Life is hard, I, by the way. Just, just, just shed a tear for uh, Chana in the uh, comments if you're, if you're just mourning the fact that he has to struggle through four thousand dollars of gear. <laughs> hey, by the way, because he punched fear in the face and he built his influence in a niche that he's passionate about. You know what I mean? Well, like how epic. I mean, let let's just say now I've been practicing my thirty second, um, you know, pitch. So I'll, I'll let you guys know what's happening, right? I'm the highest paid wedding DJ in my town. Along with that, I also have 10 to 15 music students. I work two nights graveyard at a hotel type place. And my weekly Tuesday night, 
was the best Tuesday night in my town for about five years. So along with all of that, I started a YouTube channel from scratch and now I've got what 530 some videos, 13 million views and 82,000 plus subscribers. So if you're telling me or telling yourself you don't have time, you're wrong. I made time and with all those other four things happening, I built up this this channel. And you know, every time I see an email saying, "Yo, do you want to be on Coffee with Canal? Do I want to talk to the guy directly who like had a big uh a impact on changing my life yes yes let me i was actually about to work out and i saw this happening i'm like oh hey um uh, i'm gonna go downstairs you know i tell my wife <laughs> she's like what are you doing now because she wants me to do the workout you know i'm trying to avoid it but anyway that's a different story so um so anyway i you know i review tvs i review home home audio equipment home entertainment stuff and i haven't actually reviewed any tvs um you know until you know i didn't get one in until a couple of months ago because i figured i need to learn how to calibrate the tvs because my opinions about an uncalibrated tv would just kind of be like it wouldn't have any frame of reference right so i spent two grand on the calibration tools uh, contacted the calibration company. Their software is $3,000 a year. Um, they decided to give me that for free on a reviewer program. So cool. Um, the other cool part was the guy was on the phone with me for, I think about four, two hour sessions. And I would sit there and it was team viewer. So he can see what's happening on my computer screen. And I would make all the adjustments on the TV, literally taught me through team viewer, how to calibrate the TVs manually. And, um, so I've got all these TVs coming in, I can calibrate the TVs. And when you manually do these, honestly, some of these are like, I'm changing five or six settings and the, the like graphs on the, um, you know, pre calibration are all over the place. And then after they're all like in a row, you know, all the colors, little dots are in the squares, So everything's accurate. And then my friend was like, so if I take those settings, can I plug them in to my TV? And I'm like, yeah, they'd be around the same thing. So, you know, normally it costs like 300 to $600 to have a professional calibrator come to your home. And, you know, with COVID-19 and all this other stuff, probably not the best thing. So, well, I have a website and I have um, this PDF or, you know, well, it's a Photoshop situation. I make it to a PDF of my press kit. So I have all my branding set up. So now I've repurposed my uh, press kit into a, a settings packet for all these TVs. And I'll give you settings for dark room, light room, and game mode. No professional calibrator calibrates game mode. So it's differentiating. And I'm selling mm -hmm. these things for $50 a piece. And I put, I put my pitch in the review video of that specific TV. And I use my website to do the sales. So all I need are 2,000 sales a year. At fifty dollars to make that hundred thousand, along with all the other things that I'm doing. Boom! So, Mic drop moment. Did y'all hear that? And what a creative way to sell a digital product that serves people and saves people massive money because the software super expensive, hiring a calibrator, all this stuff could be super expensive, um, and at serving people, getting that what the word is arbitrage, finding that middle. Uh, ground where it's a great investment to have your TV set up right and to get the details for it specifically. And at $50, 2000 sales, that is a six figure year business. Um, and on top of that, you still love DJing. You still got YouTube ads, you got brands, you could do other things. And so what's crazy is I know a lot of us would love to maybe just hit our target of 40 K a year, um, hit a six figure a year business. But you can scale this in like wh whatever your ambitions are. This can turn into multiple six figures. This could really grow. And um, that's really inspiring. And, um, yeah. thanks and, for and, and I'm reusing the stuff that I bought. Like I paid a graphics guy to make my press kit. Haven't used it in a year. You know, website. I'm still paying for it. Haven't used, haven't, you know, and the website was from, you know, your guys, you know, saying you should have a website where you transcribe the you know, video. So you have a text thing and emb embed the video and it'll come up on search. And oddly enough, my most frequently visited um, website page is like how to set up um, HDR for an Xbox um, One X on an LG. And when I s Google that, my, my article is number one and my video is number one. 
So like when you Google search that, so like having that is great. Just, ha you know, there's just so much, only so much time I can dedicate to, you know, creating those blog posts and moving things over, um, especially with all the other jobs and other stuff I have to do. Um, I was thinking about hiring somebody, but I was like, eh, and I just kind of forgot about it. But now, and like, you know, it was just a WordPress site and I already have WooCommerce. I just had to activate it. So I've got now like, you know, the website name slash shop and my two tests um, are up there. And, you know, as the channel continues to grow over 100,000 subscribers, I'll have multiple TVs, more TVs coming in every year. Like this is something that can snowball, I think, into at least like, you know, easily like 200, 300,000 a year just on that. Depend, you I'm know, in. as if things continue the way they're going. So, well, that's man. it, bro. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and so grateful. Yeah. I mean, you've been a part of Video Ranked Academy for a while, like years, three huh? years, three years now. I'm four years doing YouTube, three years in Video Ranking Academy, and uh, yeah, man. And uh, I'm 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 branching off into uh, Twitch, getting subscribers on Twitch for my DJ streams, and uh, yeah. you know, my my friend, I she's an old school DJ in Vegas has multiple or had multiple, you know, Vegas residencies. And I know her from back in college and I was like, Oh, you should get on Twitch. You should try stream elements. Da, 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 da. Three months later, she's got like 500 subscribers. So she's making like 2000 a month, DJing three nights a week. Granted it's for like six hours a night. You know, these are long, long sure. sessions. Um, but she's having a blast and she's so surprised and she's only been doing it for three months. So, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, when, when you go all in or when you start having these ideas or like, hey, let me just try this. If you do something and try it just to try it and see how it is without thinking about how much money you're going to make, like the reward on that risk you're taking, you know, can can be huge. Mm. Can be huge. I love it, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you. And uh, thanks so much for uh, coming on the show. Go do that workout now, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hey, hey congratulations on, uh, you know, um, junior baby coming soon. I so, know. Uh, Any moment. We I, keep I'm, talking. Uh, we keep joking around where we go, man, it'd be nice if he came during the day. And then and then as we're like, we're kind of getting tired at night, I go, you think uh, we're going to the hospital, babe? She's like, I don't want to. I want to sleep, you know, but <laughs> hopefully uh, he comes at, at 10 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, come on. Time to we rest. Come on our timetable, Sean Bradley. We'd appreciate that, right? <laughs> well, appreciate oh, you, man. Great, Thank man. you so much hey, for coming on. No problem. Talk to you later. Peace. Cheers, bro. All right, we are going to have uh, Marcus on in just a second and uh, we'll be landing the plane. Michelle said, this is so inspiring. Wow, having the business mindset is everything. I love that, Michelle. And that's the power of Coffee with Cannell, where we're here to help you build that business mindset, get your grind on, your hustle right, your income flowing, your influence growing. And so um, really cool uh, story there. And uh, your battle station is epic, Rachel says. Uh, yeah, Techno Dad's got the, the LED lights behind. The power of live streaming. And my friends, you got to build your battle station. Meaning you got, just like right now, I'm live streaming. I'm using StreamYard and I'm on, live streaming to um, multiple different places, right? We're over on Facebook, we're on YouTube. And if you ever kind of want to know the tools we use, uh, thinkmediatools.com. Go to thinkmediatools.com because we talk about whether it's software, whether it's video editing, whether it's where we get our music, thinkmediatools.com, including our live stream gear, because the power of building a battle station is being able to create content like the Coffee with Candles show. So inspiring to see that Techno Dad is not just doing pre-recorded videos, but he's tapping into the power of live streaming. It's not either or, it's both and. We do pre-recorded and edited content. We do live content. By the way, we record online courses in this battle station. I do meetings with my team now at that stage with this battle station. I meet with brands at this battle station. When you switch from dabbling to dominating, you wanna have the tools for the trade. It's okay to start with whatever you have. And it really is never about your resources. It's about your resourcefulness. But at some point you gotta be thinking about, man, what gear do I need to do this at a world-class level? And that's about building your battle station. So I hope you're subscribed to Think Media. I can't even wait for the next couple of weeks and months. We are gonna go so deep in lighting, 
webcams, USB mics, software, live streaming, Zoom tips, building battle stations so that we can create content at a world-class level. And uh, if you want to learn about the tools we use, check out all of our tools at thinkmediatools.com. We have another session coming on, but I'm wondering if we could get this video to 100 likes on YouTube. Smash the like button if you haven't, and maybe share this stream for somebody else that's trying to figure out how to um, build their extra income streams take their knowledge or their hobby or their passion online and start creating content around it. And uh, let me know, uh, hit smash that like button, share the stream if you've been getting value today on this Coffee with Keno episode the day before my wife's due date. Officially, I heard that it's actually tomorrow. I've been saying it wrong. And people have been like, oh, sometimes that first one comes a little bit late. So maybe it's this weekend. Maybe it's tonight. Maybe it's next week. I'm excited. Very soon, I will be going into dad mode, and uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm excited for that season. Well, hey, we got Marcus on the show. Marcus, my man, remind people what it is that you do and where you're streaming from, and let me know how I can help. Yeah, absolutely. I'm based in Basel, Switzerland, and my main channel is uh, communication tips from a comedian. And I just started also a second channel last week about um, about financial independence, which is actually something that you and I talked about about a month ago on the stream. So I I took the decision to make a little pause on my main channel and go for the for the personal finance stuff. So I've been really inspired to get started with with affiliate marketing. And I have a question about the different styles of using affiliate links. So one style is very simple, like you know, buy the Canon M50 Amazon link. Then there's a style that like Vanessa Lau uses where it says, here's my favorite camera and there's an Amazon link, but she doesn't tell you which camera it is. You have to click the link to find out. And then there's a style that, that you use, which is like kit.co and then the site that you just mentioned with all the tools. So I'm wondering which of these different styles would you would you recommend? What are the pros and cons of doing? Like like Vanessa's method, I imagine that the, that the advantage of that is that you get the cookie on, you get the Amazon cookie just for finding out which camera it is. So I would appreciate a little bit of um, thoughts as I'm just getting started with um, with affiliate marketing in the next couple of months. Yeah, that's a great question. And I like that you just detailed, I mean, you just added value to our community um, by breaking that down. I, I don't know, or I'll give my opinion on if there's, I, I don't think it, any of those methods is wrong for, for one, I think it'd be interesting in experimenting. I would say that um, I think at Think Media, we have definitely kind of tapped into doing affiliate marketing at a pretty world-class level. I mean, just just to look at, and I haven't looked at this recently we've been doing our conference, um, we are at uh, just this month at something like 117,000 clicks um, and have earned 14,000 uh, in profit just this month, pretty decent. So let's say last month, um, we did something like $34,189. And we can also see, of course, a lot of that has to do with camera and photography, musical instruments. You can see how it breaks down. And this is the back end. Um, you know, friends, we don't only just have the clicks here, but the amount of ordered items, uh, the conversion rate, 5.61. That I think is a, is a big key in answer to your question because uh, the conversion rate is not necessarily, um, it has to do maybe with how valuable the video is and thinking through the entire customer journey in affiliate marketing, if that makes sense. Because um, I think what's happened at Think Media, a couple summarized principles is I think part of it's trust. Again, affiliate marketing for us is not just like a cash grab, it's understanding how to monetize truly valuable information to say, hey, here's a comparison of two things. And this is really why we think this is the better option. Choice is yours. But people have built trust with us over the years and have said, man, when it's exactly, that's the goal. It's exactly as Sean described or uh, Omar subscribed or Nolan described. And I feel like I've inv invested my money in something that's good. And of course, affiliate marketing doesn't make the product cost anymore. So it's such a great way to earn money as a creator. But to maybe answer your, your question more specifically, we've bolted on 
Um, I think the Think Media Tools page that we just give an example, that's something eventually everybody should do because eventually as an online entrepreneur, you should have what tools you use on your website. Like think about it, right? Eventually, you're gonna probably pick a place where you're gonna be building your e email list. Eventually, you're gonna pick, uh, I mean, for us, it's crazy how many different, I mean, we have at this stage in business, Slack and Monday.com, and we use Epidemic Music, and we use Musicbed, and we use Kajabi, and we also use Thinkific, and we also use a text message service. I forget what it's called. And we also use vidIQ. And so eventually there's just so many different tools um, by summarizing where those all are, you can share it quickly like I just did. And if people want an example, go to Fig Media Tools. It's an example of exactly what you said in regards. These of course are our affiliate links and it's taken, I wanna encourage you, it's taken years, right? To, to build this all up um, and, and so start simple. In regards to Vanessa's method, yes, maybe you get the click, but my guess is a couple things. I don't think she takes like Amazon affiliate marketing anywhere near as serious as we do because she's built such a profitable coaching and even course business, helping people with Instagram and build their businesses. Um, and most, I haven't met anybody that is anywhere near our results in affiliate marketing. So I do think if I was to lean, not just because it's kind of our process, if you look at our process of doing it, it's sort of a linear flow of super valuable search-based video, answering a question and giving what we believe to be the most ethical, solid, helpful answer, and then clearly letting people find that answer in the description. So things like verbal call to actions to let people know. And so there are links in the description to these products, maybe even knowing ahead of time before you press record, and right now webcams are kind of sold out and kind of hard to find. And so I've actually linked a couple different resources in the description down below. So you can check b &H Photo, Amazon and eBay, which may be the only place that you can get this webcam right now. That is just very clear instructions to the viewer to be able to now go search that out, click those links and if they were to click Amazon, B and H and eBay, that cookie would be on all three sites in re in regards to uh, or on that computer for all three sites in regards to whatever purchases they make for whatever the cookie time frame is. So I'm not sure if I answered your question good, but uh, what are your thoughts on uh, that end? But but the idea of of building your that site of your own, I think that is probably a good good idea also to show you to show your viewers that you are serious that that you do you know evaluate all these different products and uh, i i guess that would is that would give give a good impression to somebody that oh he doesn't only push this one product but he actually has intelligent views about all these different things so I, I'm, I'm i'm inspired to put together that list and i think it doesn't have to be complicated I, I think i could just put it on my wordpress site it could just be a page here are the tools that i use with, with the filler things right 100 and then it becomes both you can have even that link in your description all the time to just people could maybe stumble on it um you could have the specific video with a specific call to action like you're doing here um talking about maybe m50 versus canon the camcorder, so you have the M50 link or a, a Zoom affiliate link. Does Zoom have an affiliate program? Used to have it, but I think they quit it during the the current situation. Yeah, that makes sense. I, that's something that we haven't really promoted. So, um, you know, whatever it is, whether it could be Streamyard or something else, you talk about. Um, but then the power of having those clear URLs or a, something clear you could share on a live stream is exactly ThinkMediaTools.com. It also gives you the chance to maybe go live, answer Q and A, or even share on social. Like you could send a tweet out that that website stands alone. So at the end of the day, I love the question because you brought up a couple different strategies and that is what we should all kind of be developing. At some point we might find our secret sauce, the best strategy for us, but my kind of summary answer is do all of them. I mean it, or, right. or do the best one for the context of the, of the content you're creating. You know what I mean? You never, as this is a great tip too, 
You usually in any one video, you only want one call to action though. And that's kind of a good online marketing. Like if you tell people to go four places, they're going to go nowhere because like, I can't, how can I go in four directions? Is it North, South, East, or West? So when thinking about what strategy you're going to use in regards to a call to action, to an affiliate link or whatever, I would encourage always research before you press record and plan your video before you press record to think through the whole process. As we get better in creating our videos, it's actually thinking through the whole thing of, of how does this all align? How is this all congruent so that the viewer, it's one of those things where once you're done recording, you're editing or the video is coming out, you're like, shoot, I should have said, I've done that a million times. Wait a minute, like I could have been a lot, I didn't make that very easy for the viewer. And I'm sure that everybody watching this can maybe relate where you look back and you're like, shoot, I, I what if I would have given a call to action? One of the things that I find so fascinating is, uh, is I remember I used to, I was like flipping watches and I looked at like these Nixon watches, like a watch like this. And uh, I would see a watch like this video right here where this person just shows off this watch and uh, okay, it looks like they might have an affiliate link. Nope, they don't. It's not, it's not an affiliate link to eBay and it doesn't link to anything. And so this particular video, by just kind of reviewing a watch, has 86,000 views and potentially no affiliate link in the description. So one, there's the idea of the chance that you always could put it an affiliate link in the description um, and that could be at least an opportunity for some. But the second level is if you don't give an actual call to action, then chances are no one's gonna find that link, like a very small percentage. And once the video is out, and once it has 81,656 views, you might look back on an old video and be like, dang, I could be having some passive income right now. But hopefully that becomes a lesson and even watching this Coffee with Candle, we think through to be like, man, on that next one, I would just wanna make sure that my, my messaging, my call to actions, the things I include in the video, the verbal call to actions I give, the description. I wanna make that, I wanna remove friction as best as possible and just make sure I'm clear and helpful and I serve the viewer and I let them know about a summary of show notes and links in the description or whatever. Because if you don't give that verbal call to action, then chances are you're not gonna ever make any affiliate sales or you're gonna make very few. So that's just kind of a practical tip for everybody on uh, Coffee with Cannell today. Marcus, was that helpful? Yeah, absolutely, very powerful. I got some uh, good ideas from them. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Awesome, and well, hey, I appreciate you and thanks so much for coming on Coffee with Cannell. Thank you. Cheers. All right, Coffee with Cannell, thank you for, uh, smashing that like button man we only got to 93 likes while i was live can we hit 100 can we throw some champagne coffee in the air and uh and see if we could reach all the way to 100 and let me know what um you're gonna do next you know we're action takers here at the think media company and um uh, what action item after today is it to start exploring how you could create an online course um, is it, uh, making your next video? Is it getting better at affiliate marketing and realizing, shoot, and I had some videos where I talked about some stuff and I left money on the table. I missed out on some monetization opportunities. Uh, let me know. We're at 99 likes <claps> coffee with candle sell it 100. Uh, sh dun, 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 sh dun, dun, sh bun, dun, 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 sh bum, bum, bum. Okay. We did it. We did it. Stream focus. We did it living quite simply. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Grateful that we could hang out before my life changes forever. <laughs> and uh, my first um, baby hits the scene. Did you hear that? I said the first. I was like, babe, I'm excited to get to four here as, as quick as possible. Lewis is going to be getting better at affiliate marketing. Thanks so much, uh, Lewis, for saying, um, for taking action and, and dropping your aha moment. What is one of your aha moments uh, today? Uh, and Lena asks, how should we move forward? Feeling a little lost. Uh, and Lena, I recommend checking out the think marketing podcast and we are about to go into season two in a couple weeks. And so we're taking a couple weeks off, um, to, uh, prepare some really new, powerful content, but we have about 35 episodes. So I recommend as you're going on walks, as you're, um, working out, as you're doing chores, as you got some time, pop in some headphones, 
jump on Spotify, jump on Apple Podcasts or Google, wherever you listen to podcasts, or if you don't listen to podcasts yet, check it out and listen to the past episodes because if you're feeling lost, it's very normal. There's so much opportunity. It's almost like opportunity overwhelm. Where do I fit in? What is my, what do I, what am I specifically going to do? I really believe that kind of like taking a safari through the online marketing content creation world and just being like, my gosh, there's zebras and there's elephants and there's giraffes. It's like, wow, there's affiliate marketing. There's online courses. There's YouTube channels. There's podcasts. There's TikTok. What do I do? Well, first go on a safari and just get familiar with the landscape. And one of the best ways to do that is to go through and listen to um, the season one of the Think Marketing podcast and those thirst first uh, 35 episodes, obviously not all at once. Um, if you want, you know, some more help, of course, and you know that you're ready to be, you're ready to go to the next level, you're serious and you just need like, how can Think Media help me? What are, what products and programs or the monthly coaching program? Go to talk with think.com and uh, um, talk to someone on the Think Media team. And we definitely will give you uh, some more, uh, we well, would love to help you and figure out how we can help you reach your goals. Uh, faster. And again, I want to thank you so much for uh, being a part of the stream. Justin says, I need to build an online course for teaching creative writing. That's a clear vision, um, Justin, and I appreciate you. And thank you so much for being here today. Michelle says, I need to learn how to update my website and build my mailing list. Clarity is power. And so it's um, awesome to know what your next steps are. But if you don't, just stay in it. Just keep learning, keep reading, keep listening, keep showing up. Uh, if you don't quit, you win. And uh, there is a lot to learn. Fight overwhelm and just take it one step at a time. I want to thank you for um, being a part of uh, the show today. And I imagine next time we'll be hanging out, I'm going to have uh, a little baby that I'll be holding up like the Lion King. I, uh, the manga, like right ho holding up the baby and, uh, we'll christen him on a coffee with candle. What are we talking about? Appreciate you smash. Like if you got value today, thanks so much for being a part of the think media community links in the description down below or in the Facebook comments. If you need, um, 